Good evening, everybody. I am thrilled tonight to have the opportunity to seek your support for the next big science project. And that project is Blanky, the baby laboratory for infant kindled innovation and exploration, or as I like to call it, a modest proposal to make babies <laughs> less useless. Now we begin with the facts. Babies, they're terrible. They are loud and smelly. They're a constant source of stress for adults. In this country, they represent an economic burden of over $50 billion per year. In fact, across the entire world, babies are so insufferable that the higher a country's birth rate is, the higher its murder rate is. That's a true fact. <laughs> there can be no doubt that babies can really screw things up, but the central mission of Blanky is to answer the following question. How can we turn this disruptive tyke into disruptive tech? <laughs> Now, when we first started work at Blanky, we thought, babies are smelly. <laughs> it's true, babies are smelly. Could we take the source of that smell and generate biofuels? Well, we learned very quickly that algae is actually a much more efficient source <laughs> of biocrude. We learned that it is very dangerous to centralize production. <laughs> if there's a leak in your baby biocrude pipeline, you've got a crappy situation on your hands. That's true, that's true. We also learned that there's a kind of social stigma associated. <laughs> with using baby waste as fuel, so that makes this kind of a product very difficult to market. We next thought maybe we could use babies because they are both loud and very sensitive to motion as seismic activity sensors but we very quickly learned that the false positive rate <laughs> is far too high. Babies cry all the time. We learned that the sensor maintenance would be unusually expensive. Finally, our legal counsel advised us that it would simply be unethical <laughs> to deliberately introduce babies into regions of high seismic activity. So these are the ideas that didn't quite pan out, but here's an idea that's been a real hit, and this is what I'm looking for your support for, and that is the application of babies to cryptography. <laughs> now, I don't need to tell you why cryptography is important. It underlies all of global electronic commerce. It's a matter of national security, of nuclear safety. In short, it is a matter of life and death. The grand challenge in cryptography is to break codes fast, and for that purpose, we already have computers that could get the job done. A classical computer can break a very general class of codes in an amount of time that is exponential in the complexity of the code. It can happen, but the problem is these computers, they're way too slow and they're way too big. Now, I know the physicists in the audience are clamoring, well, aren't quantum computers the answer? And theoretically speaking, they are. They can break these same codes in an amount of time that is logarithmic in the complexity. That's much better. The downside is quantum computers are very hard to build. In fact, they're so hard to build, they don't exist. <laughs> you see, the reason cryptography is so hard is because codes are essentially new languages. But here's, <laughs> here's an observation. Babies naturally learn new languages. <laughs> In fact, they naturally learn new languages that are so complex, they were once used as codes, like the Navajo language during World War II. That's true. Moreover, the time to learn a new language 
regardless of how complex it is, is always on the order of one year. This motivates a fundamental paradigm shift in cryptography, or cryptography. <laughs> Let's go back to that plot from before. The real promise of the baby computer is that it can crack any code in an amount of time that is constant <laughs> in the complexity of the code. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, the future of cryptography is the computoddler. <laughs> now, I'm going to tell you how a computoddler would work. It's very simple. Two steps. Step one, the toddler training system. In the toddler training system, you take your ensemble of babies and you place them. in the parallelized infant incubator. In the incubator, they are exposed to a constant stream of the encrypted source, as well as another language like English. Then, after an amount of time that is on the order of one year, <laughs> you will have produced a batch of keys to instant decryption, or kids. That's step one. Step two, you take your kid and you feed in so you take your kid, you put your kid through the baby brain utilization system. Here's how it works. You put in as input the encrypted source. What you then get as output is a decryption of the enemy combatant's message. <laughs> Who would have known? It was that easy all along. But there's more. Baby computers really are a very promising technology. First off, unlike quantum computers, babies are an already existing technology. In fact, they're so easy to make, they're sometimes made by accident. That's a true fact. Unlike classical computers, a baby computer <laughs> could be made very small because babies can be packed efficiently into very small spaces. For those of you who are concerned about the resilience and fidelity of baby computers, let me assure you, they are both fault tolerant <laughs> and fault tolerant. <laughs> Lastly, because babies have yet <laughs> because babies have yet to begin to form memories they are impossible to hack <laughs> which means we would have nothing to fear when little jimmy falls into the hands of the russians Now, I want to close by remarking on the feasibility and the impact of a computoddler research program. First off, the infrastructure is already in place. What I am showing here are the 20 US metro areas with the highest birth rate. What I am showing now are four of the 10 largest NSA data centers. <laughs> That's not a coincidence. This is an opportunity. <laughs> Moreover, a computer research program could eliminate the costs of childcare. Parents would bring their kids into free daycare centers that would be set up all across the country. And we'd tell the parents that their kids would be learning math. <laughs> Such a program would enjoy broad bipartisan support. 
In fact, it is the rare kind of program that would have Democrats supporting spending on national defense and Republicans supporting spending on early childhood education. <laughs> It's true. It's possible. <laughs> Such a program would instill core values like work ethic and patriotism in infants, a demographic that notoriously lacks work ethic and patriotism. <laughs> Finally, we have a president who very famously distrusts the results and the methods of the intelligence community. Compute toddlers would be an American-made intelligence asset that our president would trust and easily relate to. <laughs> I hope I have earned your support for Blanky but I want to leave you with a closing thought. We live in an increasingly uncertain world, and we are rapidly running out of the tools to confront the threats that face us. In light of such grave challenges, won't somebody please think of the children? <laughs>